Oh, that was good. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld crowd. Okay, and now, okay, I know it's coming next. Good masters, sweet ladies, voices from a medieval village. Sorry, 
was my doing. But my brother picked up something foul and mashed it into his mouth. By the time I got her, she plucked up her skirts to go. Her back was straight as a knife. Her head fell down. <coughs> Poor girl. I was sorry, almost to weeping. On the way home, I went to church. I dragged the twins before the crucifix and knelt down, trying to pray and keep hold at the same time. I prayed that God would forgive me, that the mud would come off her dress, that my stepmother wouldn't die. I remember how all women are the same. Isabel, the Lord's daughter, will have to be married, and will have to squat in the straw and scream with the pain and pray for her life. And thinking of that, I added one more prayer. Sweet Jesus, come Christmas, don't let it be twins. I know, young Simon, I know thee. 
I'll loose thy Jesses and cast thee off, even though they punish me. But twas I who stole thee two years hence, climbed to the heights with many a qual, scooped thee from thy mother's nest, and felt thy perfect against my paw. I was the one who filled thy crop, who stroked thee day and night. Thou wast my captive and my child, all savageness and appetite. And it was I who gentled thee. I was the one who drew the thread that sealed thy eyelids. And for thee, I hungered and forsook my bed. Long in the night, I walked the floor, carrying thee upon my glove. I fed thee dainties, mice and eel, adder skin, and heart of dove. But now the manor's bankrupt, failed. The master's hawking days are done. The muse are empty save for thee property of the master's son. But Simon will not tend to thee. He will let thee starve and pine. Callow, shallow, pampered youth. By law of justice, thou art mine. And being mine, at break of day, the hour comes for us to part. I'll loose thee, splendid, come what may, even though it break my heart. The moment when I set thee free, neither of us will shed a tear. Thy valor taught me to scorn fear. What care I what they do to me? The Feast of All Souls, I ran for my tutor. Latin and grammar, no wonder. I ran to the woods where I saw his tracks. This big, the muddy scratch bottom side of the trees. Followed his brain straight to his bed where he found it warm. There was a boar in the forest. When I went back, there was my uncle, rod in hand, but didn't strike. I told him, there's a boar in the forest. Why then we'll go hunting? And as for you, you will hunt like a man and be flogged like a boy. Help kill the boar, and I'll give you the kidneys. You turn tail, and I'll have the skin off your back. That night, I laid and dreamed of the hunt, the underbrush stirring. The snort of the boar, its foul mouth foaming, its tusks like scimitars. Those tusks can slice a man groin to gorge. But that's not the worst. The man who dies from the wound of a boar loses his soul and burns in hell. Dawn came, we mounted long before noon. The dogs caught the scent and the hunt was on. Two relays of hands squealing most sore. The third one faint with fatigue. I could smell my sweat, rank with fear. Then, it was like in my dream, the underbrush moved. The sticks shattered. I saw it, bristling, dark as the devil, huge as a horse. Then my bowels turned to water. My uncle dismounted and I did the same. My legs were like straw, but I walked. Mouth dry, palms wet, one hand forward on the spear and one foot ahead. To fall would be death. It charged, my uncle lunged, and I behind him thrust, felt the spear pierce, braced myself into a armpit. It took a long time, the dogs keening and the boar struggling, blood on the grass, but I stood my ground. At last it was over and the brute lay still. I almost wept, the joy of it and the terror. I gasped like a fish, let my head fall back. The green leaf swam in the sky. He kept his word right there in the wood. He kindled the fire and butchered the boar. The kidneys were mine, gleaming with fat. He clapped my back and called me a man. But dark in the night, I hear that sound, sweat in my sleep, and my spear slips through my hand. I dream that I'm back in the wood with that boy.
fathers, other apprentices, everyone fathers with approval like peers. Fathers taught many a boy to blow glass. We've had apprentices year after year, but Pierce has the eye for it. That's what our father says. Pierce has the lungs. He's hardworking too. So his father says Pierce will inherit the business. That is, if he marries one, one of, of us two. two. Mary, God help us. Pierce never speaks to us. Nose in the air and silent and rude. Even <laughs> at supper time, Pierce doesn't talk. He crouches down low like a dog at his food. Both of us hate him. Mary is older, older than me, and the same age as Pierce. If he marries my sister, he'll get the shop sooner. I won't be ready for five or six years. But Mary, it's dear to me. How can I sacrifice her to that boy with the sticking out ears? How can our father be toast so tyrannical? Nobody in her right mind would want Pierce. Maudie is younger. Probably Pierce would want someone younger instead. And Maud is so pretty, even though she's the one who put all those slugs in his bed. <laughs> Pierce isn't bad looking, not when he's laughing. His hair is uncombed and his clothes are awry. He'd look a lot better if only he smiled. But Pierce is an orphan. He's proud to be shy. If I have to wed Pierce, I'll go out of my mind. It's not that I like him, it's just that it's kinder. The way they scratch the way they peer, the way he's scratched up. And of course, more refined to treat him with earwax, courtesy, grime from his skin. He's alone in the world, and I know that he's often felt lonely. He's lousy. His fingernails, ugh. Sometimes when I watch him, I'm aware of a sort of tug at my conscience. What if I befriended him, mended his tooth, helped him to tend to the burns on his face, his bed bugs and food? I know what would happen. My sister would tell me. And then there's his haircut, the shape of his head. He looks like a hedgehog. What may would in dread? A married with one who's so churlish and rough. The truth of the matter is uh, that I'm not, is that father is thinking. I'm constantly shrinking. A business and profit. I, I, should tell, I should have more courage and follow my conscience. However, Maud teases, I should have more sense. He ought to be thinking about his poor daughters. Why must we submit like lambs to the slaughter? I should tell Maud we should both hold our tongues. Must Marion be wed because Pierce has good lungs? I should have more... I must... And of course I'm too young to be thinking of marriage. My only thought is to be decently kind, to marry a man. There's no time to be lost! Is a matter of weight. If I have to cost him, I'm going to tell Father we simply hate Pierce. I'll go down on my knees. I'll say, please, I'll shed tears. You share your whole life. I'm willing to beg. Your children, your work day. I'd rather have plague. Your sorrows, your pleasures. <laughs> I'd rather have leprosy. Your ale and your bread. I must think over clearly what Father has said. If I had to be wed, when all's done and said, I'd rather be dead than wed Pierce. I'll wed Pierce. <laughs> Sweated, 
blue. My cheeks puffed out. The iron pipe banged my teeth. I blew like the angel Gabriel sounding the horn on Judgment Day. I felt the bubble start to form. I trapped the air. I plugged the pipe, rolled it, swirled it on the marble slab, and the glass was off. Lopsided. I didn't dare look at him. And then he said, Well done. St. Luke, help me to try again and keep my master well. Amen. Rest him. 
I saw her stoop. He saw me stoop. Pick up the stone. He waited. Why? Why didn't he run? I wouldn't run or shield my face. A girl's aim isn't much. <laughs> I glared at her. He stared at me. Furious. Frightened. I wouldn't flinch. But he didn't run. I thank my God that I am a maid and not a man who was tucked with a bow. If I were a man and I saw in the woods white feathered swan or soft eyed doe, I could not shoot. I could not force my hand to let the arrow go. She threw the stone. I threw the stone, but not at me. Over the water, skipping, skimming, swift and merry, bouncing twice over, over the water. water. He stared at me. I picked up a stone and threw. One, two, three, four, four times skip, bounce like a ball. I clapped my hands and saw him smile. He wasn't really like a Jew. He wasn't like a Jew at all. He played there happily. Half an hour, cast our stones at the watercrest stream. They skipped, splashed, sank. We laughed together. Time flew past us like a dream. She was different. He was different from the others. Though I know that, that can't, can't be true. true. She was like, he was like a friend, a sister, a friend, a brother. Not like a Christian. More like a Christian. More like a Jew. Less like a Jew. The bell tolled for nones. I remembered my basket. Empty. My mother, what would she say if she knew I wasted time in the woods with the two? When I heard the bells, they seemed to say, she is a Christian, an enemy. I thought of my God. I thought of my people. I turned on my heel and walked away. I stopped and plucked the watercress. When I looked up, he was gone. One half hour, I forgot, standing there in the water shoal, who she was, who he was, and my duty to God. I never told a living soul. <coughs>
I knew I heard her dragging out that lamb, and she lay on the ground, as motionless as death. I called the old shepherd and made him look at her. He said she would die, he said. She's given up. Sheep don't fight. That's why they need shepherds. I started to cry, and old Ralph saw. There's one thing, he said. I wet my nose on my sleeve. What's that? You might try singing. No one knows why, but sheep fancy music. They do. So all that day and all that night, I stayed by Jill and sang. It was really a song for the Virgin Mary, but I changed the words and sang it over and over, and the stars came out. I stroked her fleece and felt her chest a hundred times to see if she was still breathing. The moon crossed the sky. There was dew on the grass. The morning star rose. I sang until my voice was hoarse, and I was shivering so hard I couldn't go on. Then I wrapped my arms around Jill, lay down beside her, and slept. I must have slept well, because she got away from me. When I opened my eyes, the sky was full red, and Jill was standing up, cropping her grass. Thank you. 